On the 7th of October, 2023, Hamas launched the most dangerous attack of this century on Israel. Five thousand rockets were launched. One thousand four hundred civilians lost their lives in this entire attack and more than 200 hostages were taken. But this is only half the story. After this terrorist attack, Israel retaliated by launching an attack on the Gaza Strip and declared war against Hamas. More than 8,000 people have already lost their lives in this conflict, which has been ongoing for three weeks. Moreover, other countries have become involved in this war. Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia, the USA, UK, and Canada were already involved. And now China has also sent six warships from Muscat Oman into the region. But in this whole scenario, a question definitely arises. Is there no country that can stop this war? The answer is Qatar. How can Qatar, this small Middle Eastern country with a population of only 2.7 million and a land area smaller than the US state of Connecticut, how can this small Middle Eastern country finally put an end to the conflict between Israel and Palestine? Let's establish a timeline. This is the Gaza Strip, home to two million people. However, it's often referred to as the world's largest open-air prison. Why? Because it's sandwiched between Israel on one side and Egypt on the other, with the Mediterranean Sea surrounding the remaining portion. This means there are only two exit routes from Gaza, through Israel or through Egypt. Hamas is designated as a terrorist organization by the United States, the European Union, and several other countries due to its stated objectives and involvement in acts of violence. Hamas's charter includes language that calls for the destruction of Israel and the use of jihad to achieve its goals, which has contributed to its designation as a terrorist group. Even though many countries consider Hamas a terrorist group, Qatar sees Hamas as freedom fighters. In 2012, when the head of state of Qatar visited Gaza for the first time, seeing the condition of Gaza, he pledged an aid of $400 million so that Gaza could be reconstructed. This arrangement does not end here. Qatar still sends $30 million every month to Gaza, pays salaries to people in Gaza, and also gives them fuel money. By now, you might have started to get a bit of an idea why I was saying that only Qatar can stop the Israel-Palestine war. In the next five minutes, this will become fully clear to you. First, let's talk about why Qatar supports militant groups like Hamas and what its objectives are behind it. Qatar has strategically positioned itself as a skilled negotiator on various international issues. It has played a role in mediating conflicts and facilitating negotiations between different parties. For instance, in the case of Sergeant Bo Bergdahl's capture by the Taliban in 2014, Qatar helped negotiate his release in exchange for the release of five Taliban detainees from a U.S. prison. This diplomatic effort was seen positively by the United States, which has an important military base in Qatar, the al Udaid Air Base. As a result of such negotiations and its strategic location, Qatar is considered an important ally by Western countries. Qatar holds a unique position as a major non-NATO ally of the United States, a status it shares with neighboring Pakistan. This designation comes with various benefits, including trade, security, and defense cooperation. Qatar's leadership is known for its strategic approach, recognizing that the U.S. often engages with countries to serve its interests. Qatar maintains a delicate balancing act. While openly supporting America's war on terror, it has faced allegations of indirectly funding terrorist groups. In 2017, the BBC reported on Qatar's close relations with various extremist organizations, including the Taliban in Afghanistan, the Houthi rebels in Yemen, and individuals associated with Al-Qaeda in Syria. Several countries neighboring Qatar, such as Saudi Arabia and the UAE, have accused Qatar of secretly financing these terror groups. It raises questions as to why no substantial action has been taken against Qatar, despite these allegations. This situation underscores Qatar's intricate diplomatic game. Look at this another case. The blockade on Yemen was imposed by Saudi Arabia and the UOE in 2015 during the Yemen civil war. The blockade was implemented when the Houthi took control of Sana'a, the capital of Yemen, and President Abdrabu Mansur Hadi resigned. The blockade had a devastating effect on Yemen, which is one of the poorest countries in the world. It prevented essential food and medical supplies from reaching the country, leading to a humanitarian crisis. According to the United Nations in 2017, 24 million Yemenis needed humanitarian assistance and 10 million were on the brink of starvation. Qatar played a pivotal role in ending the Yemen blockade. In 2017, Qatar's foreign minister, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdulrahman Al Thani, met with his Saudi and Emirati counterparts to discuss the blockade. After several rounds, 
Qatar succeeded in reaching an agreement to end the blockade. An agreement was reached between the three nations on June 5, 2017. The terms of the agreement were that Saudi Arabia and the UAE would lift the blockade on Yemen, and Qatar was ready to reduce its relations with Iran and the Houthi rebels. The end of the Yemen blockade was a significant victory for Qatar. It demonstrated that Qatar can mediate in regional disputes and is willing to resolve internal differences with its neighboring countries. Qatar has a track record of intervening in hostage situations involving Western or Arab nationals kidnapped by terrorist groups. For instance, in April 2017, when Iranian officials were captured in Syria, Qatar stepped in and secured their release by reportedly paying a substantial ransom of $1 billion. This pattern of negotiations repeats itself on multiple occasions. Qatar's ability to maintain relationships with various terrorist organizations and engage in talks with them has raised concerns among its neighboring Gulf Cooperation Council GCC members. Many countries have accused Qatar of contributing to instability in the Middle East. However, in 2021, a notable shift occurred when countries like Saudi Arabia and the UAE renewed their diplomatic relations with Qatar. During this period of reconciliation, Qatar's foreign minister emphasized the role of a mediator, finding a solution to conflicts, irrespective of personal gains from the conflict. In 2021, when the United States withdrew its troops from Afghanistan, a power struggle emerged between the Afghan government and the Taliban. As the Taliban swiftly took control of areas vacated by U.S. troops, American soldiers were taken hostage. Qatar stepped in to assist in resolving the crisis. This underscores Qatar's strategy of engaging with both sides of conflicts, including terrorist organizations and Western countries. Qatar is gradually building its reputation as a problem solver capable of conducting challenging negotiations and, importantly, facilitating the release of hostages in situations where Western countries may face difficulties. Qatar also hosted the peace talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban, which led to the signing of a peace agreement in February 2020. The talks were a complex and challenging process, but Qatar was able to play a neutral and impartial role as a mediator. One of the key challenges in the peace talks was building trust between the two sides. Qatar was able to help build this trust by providing a safe and secure space for the talks to take place and by working with both sides to develop a common agenda. Another challenge was ensuring that the peace agreement was inclusive and representative of all Afghans. Qatar worked with both sides to ensure that the agreement addressed the concerns of all Afghan communities. The peace agreement signed in Doha in February 2020 was a significant step forward in the effort to end the conflict in Afghanistan. However, the agreement was not implemented fully, and the Taliban eventually took control of the country in August 2021. Despite the challenges, Qatar's role in the withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan and the peace talks was significant. Qatar played a neutral and impartial role as a mediator, and it helped to build trust between the two sides. Qatar also provided logistical and financial support to the evacuation effort. Qatar's role in Afghanistan has been praised by many international observers. The United States, for example, has thanked Qatar for its invaluable assistance in the withdrawal of U.S. troops. The United Nations has also praised Qatar for its role in the peace talks and in facilitating the evacuation of Afghans. In May 2021, tensions escalated in East Jerusalem over a series of events, including potential evictions of Palestinian families in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood and confrontations at the Al-Aqsa Mosque during the holy month of Ramadan. These events led to a series of rocket attacks by Hamas from Gaza and retaliatory airstrikes by Israel. The conflict intensified rapidly, with both sides launching attacks. Israel carried out airstrikes targeting what it claimed were Hamas military installations, weapons storage sites, and tunnel networks. Hamas, in turn, fired rockets into various cities in Israel, including Tel Aviv. The fighting led to the death of hundreds of Palestinians in Gaza, including civilians, and a smaller number of Israeli casualties, both military and civilian. Qatar, in collaboration with the United Nations and Egypt, advanced a peace agreement. On May 20, 2021, approval was granted for a ceasefire agreement, which effectively ended the intense conflict that had persisted for 11 days. Qatar has not been active for two or four years. Qatar has already solved one big dispute after another. In 2008, Qatar played a key role in mediating the Doha Agreement, which ended a six-month conflict between the Lebanese government and Hezbollah. The agreement was seen as a major diplomatic success for Qatar and helped to stabilize Lebanon. Seeing the success of Doha Agreement just one year after this, in 2009, Qatar mediated a peace agreement between the Sudanese government and Darfur rebels. The agreement helped to end the Darfur conflict, which had displaced millions of people. 
After seeing so many peace agreements, a very simple question arises. Why Qatar? Because there are other powerful countries in the Middle East, like Saudi Arabia, UAE, Egypt, Turkey. But still, why Qatar? Look, there are mainly three reasons behind this. First is financial resources, the Qatar Investment Authority, QIA, which is among the largest globally. This financial strength allows Qatar to extend aid and investment as leverage in negotiations. The country can provide financial assistance to parties in a conflict as part of its mediation efforts. This support might include humanitarian aid, reconstruction funding, or economic incentives to encourage warring parties to commit to the peace process. Second is diplomatic skills relationship building. Qatar managed to maintain a balance in its international relations, often engaging with opposing sides of a dispute. For instance, Qatar hosts both American military bases and has relations with groups like the Taliban, showcasing its broad diplomatic reach. As I mentioned earlier, Qatar has been providing economic assistance to the Gaza Strip, which has often played a role in stabilizing the situation in Gaza. This economic aid allows Qatar to maintain a consistent dialogue with Hamas, as seen in the 2021 case. Qatar will be an important country. Both sides will listen to them. Therefore, if anyone can bring peace between Hamas and Israel, it's only Qatar. If we desire peace in the world, we must actively strive for it. Qatar's contribution can be a beacon of hope in this direction. We hope that Hamas, Israel, and all involved parties seize this opportunity and move towards peace. When we all work together towards a shared goal, a better tomorrow is indeed possible.